AJ Martinez says, we have a great team, but who's going to lead us on the field when the darkness comes? Three is on the sideline. Coach T ain't on the field in pads. Well, I felt like offensively, Justin Fields, I thought he did a great job, especially in that second half. That's part of what we all want to see. When adversity hits, are you going to revert back to Chicago or are you going to be what we're hoping you can be, which is a game changer, a guy that can elevate when the O-line isn't really creating a lot of movement for Najee or Cordero Patterson, you know, to have a sustainable day on the ground. Can you be the guy that rises above it when, you know, they're giving you a ton of zone concepts, which the Colts were doing. If that first window isn't open, can you buy enough time to hit a GP streaking down the middle of the field? Can you buy enough time to hit a Calvin Austin sitting down in between the cover two defenders? He's showing that he could. And that he did. And for me, man, I think that that is leadership. I think that that's what we want when you're talking about the quarterback position. That's why, you know, when you talk about him being with the 11th overall pick when he was drafted, that was what the expectation or the hopes were, that he could do what we just saw him do on a consistent basis. And we're seeing it. Luckily for us, this is that, you know, multiple years of the struggles. I think we are getting a more matured, a more battle-tested version of Justin Fields, who is very smart with his decision-making. It was a couple of throws that he did make that I liked, that I thought were situationally aggressive and at the right time to be aggressive. But then there were also some throws that I could see him thinking about making that he actually did not make. And, Dick, I think we're all happy because I don't think it would have been the result that we would have wanted it to be. But yeah, I he like not it. put the ball in I'm like, harm's yo, way at all, really. I'm watching. I'm like, I see what he's looking at because we talk about where you, what's the intent? And it's like, he's thinking about it. And he's like, no, Cordell Patterson here. I'm thinking about it. No, Nash here. And I'm like, yo, that's all I want, man. Make a good decision. If it's not there, cool. Bump it. Next play is zone. Take what they give you. Next play. That's, you know, when I think of the, the, the great quarterbacks, like not only can they push it downfield, we know you can do that. But can you take what the defense gives you? When they're just giving you that, take that, take that, take that. And then when it's time to get the dagger, when it's time to get aggressive, then show me you could do that. But don't just be greedy. Don't just, you know, be reckless for the simp- for the sake of, well, the clock and, you know, how much time, it's just got to push right now. It's like, nah, you got time. To me, I think that's leadership. And I think that the team rallied around that. Now, defensively, different convo, right? Different convo. I'll just leave it at that right now. But. I think offensively, Justin Fields is providing a certain level of leadership and a certain level of trust. And I think as a whole, the team is going to believe in him even more so because of how he performed in that second half and his ability to galvanize the troops and be the guy that not only was, you know, doing it from a body language or communication standpoint, but also from a production standpoint. Three touchdowns, right? 300 yards through the air, five, uh, 50 on the ground. First time in still his history, a quarterback has ever done that. Talk about a multi-touchdown game. Y'all know we ain't had one of them in forever. So, to me, man, I look at that and I say, man, that's that's where your leadership is going to start to come from, man. Typically, you want your quarterback to be the guy producing, be your best player. Right now, he's playing like that. So, I'm like, I think that's my leader. That's my leader. Yeah, even though we lost, even though he didn't close it out at the end, I th- thought he took another step up in my book. I would agree. Elevated again, like went up another level because we talked about the first two weeks. Fields just don't lose us the game. Mm-hmm. Manage the game. Convert on third downs. Make make the splash plays when uh, the time's needed. Pick your spots. But ultimately, just don't lose us the game. The defense yeah. is balling out right now. This was supposed to be Russ's offense anyway, so we're just trying to make this work here. And he did that. I, I think he... Checked off those with Flying Kellers those first two weeks. Played good. I think he, as I said at the time, continued to earn an opportunity. Week three, tough game at home. Chargers against 2-0. Uh, yeah, 2-0 Chargers. Mm-hmm. Jim Harbaugh-led team. Everything's going good for the most part with the offense. And I, I think Fields, that was his best game <clears> yet. <throat> but I think the next step was we asked after that game, like, all right, what does it look like whenever things are going bad and – we're down double digits in a second half. Like, how do you respond to that? Because the offense was humming against the Chargers for the most part. I mean, he 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 did have some nice responses yeah. whenever Herbert scored in the first quarter. It was like, okay, we're down seven nothing. What do you do, Fields? And I, you know, had a nice series, went eight for eight, scored a touchdown. 
But then after that, you know, Herbert gets hurt in the second half and everything. I, I still think it was a, a big win for Fields, big win mm-hmm. for the Steelers. I mean, obviously, the way we were, we were reacting to it, I think it was justified. Yeah. But I, I think there was still more to see from Fields. Like, how agree. does he react mm-hmm. in a situation that we just saw play out against the Colts? And he was awesome. He was, I mean, I think he even rose above my expectation, anyone's expectation. Did anyone think we would be there uh, end of the game with how the defense was playing and everything, where, where Fields was going to, what, three series in a row? Mm-hmm. Score three touchdowns like that? Was it three series in a row? Uh, was there? A, I don't. I don't. I mean, he scored on three series, three touchdowns late in that second half, and like they were got to have it drives because if we didn't score there, the game was going to be over. We were going to lose. I mean, low momentum. key, it felt like because it was we had the end of the half field goal, then we had the touchdown by him. Flacco had the touchdown. Then we came back with the Phil's TD run. Matt Gay had the field goal. Then we scored that last touchdown with move. So it was back, 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 back. But it was they. Yeah, they, they had kept, that one they like, kept score. In, yeah. yeah, they kept responding. Our defense couldn't get off the field. Yeah. So shout out to Fields, man. Like that was really impressive. I I still think there is something to be said for closing out that game, but that snap didn't do him or the offense any favors either. We wouldn't have even been in that situation if Fields had him played like he did in the second half. Yeah. But that was that was another step up in my book. That was another level up where. I think we could trust the dude if we're down double digits to rally the troops and, and bring us back in the game, as long as the defense can tighten up. And th- what's crazy about that game, and I, that's what I'm saying, like I think Fields even went above expectations or even rose above even that because the defense didn't tighten up and we needed him to continue to score mm-hmm. as opposed to just, okay, we need this one touchdown get to here. This number and defense we're good, is going to yeah. get the stop, we get it back, then we get a it field goal or something. It felt like that up until that uh, Flacco to Ogletree touchdown. It felt like, yo, they're stuck right at this number, and now we're about to go yeah. ahead and take the lead or tie it, and it was like, dang, that was a touchdown right there that hurt us. Yeah, I was I was really impressed. Yeah. Shout out to Phils, man. I guess I like what I saw from him, man. I think that I learned more about him this game than I did last game. Last game was cool, um, but I told you, for the people that weren't going to be believers of Phils, what they would point to is how that second half played out once Herbert got hurt. And it just felt like, yo, there wasn't going to be enough information acquired because you weren't pushed. You weren't, you know, he still did everything he needed to do and was asked to do. And I think even above, because some of those throws were crazy. The one across the middle was to Calvin Austin. was. But I'll say this. So difference, though, last week, like I said, not a lot of information when you're not having to feel the pressure of the opponent's best player still being out there. Because obviously we know Herbert got hurt. But then you take it to this week and it's like, all right. Not only are we starting in a chaotic manner where they got these points, but they still are scoring a little bit in the second half. For us to see Phils, or at least for me to see Phils, be able to weather the storm first half, have a lot of success in the second half, and then in the midst of having some negativity, because we also remember where we had the, we're in field goal range, spins out, fumble, loses it. It doesn't yeah. kill us because yeah, defense lucky. defense stepped up though, forced the field goal. They missed the field goal. We come back and now we get ahead and uh, we went ahead and scored. But to me, it was good to even see that in the moment of not just team adversity, him as an individual having adversity because as the team, yeah, we're all down and we know that the first half wasn't exclusively on fields or exclusively on one player. It was a collective. So when you get in that second half and now it's like, dang, I got me something that I'm responsible for. I was eager to see, man, are you going to go and come back your next series and you're pressing and you're trying too hard and now you make a bad situation worse? Are you going to go in the tank or are you going to respond in a way that, you know, would make us all feel good? And I felt like that's what he did when you could see him literally coming right back like, all right, that was the mistake. All right, bet. I ain't tripping no more. Like, let's go. Let's go. And then again and again, over and over and over. Heck, even with the chaos of that end of the game snap situation. It's like, man, he still, I want to say it was the next play. Najee needs to get out of bounds. (laughs) We would agree with that as well. But I would also say this. It's just I can look at whether we say coaching or more accountability. But that happened a couple weeks ago with GP, and we all laughed it off and said, oh, well, he got out. Everything worked out. No harm, no foul. All I say is little things become big things. It was no harm, no foul because he luckily stepped out by accident, and we gave us enough time to kick a field goal. 
this time, Najee didn't get out. It wasn't luckiness. Now, Grant, I know the first I'm talking about George Pickens, this one, Najee, but as a whole, it's just understanding the situation. Those two, three yards are not worth those two to three seconds or the clock actually being running. You got to get out of bounds. And it was a good call because you're going backwards. They're not stopping the clock if you're going backwards, going out of bounds. You have to be going forward to be getting the stop, to get the clock stopped. So it was a good call. But I look at that type of stuff. I look at the little things that we've been able to get away with at times because we were winning and we just all like oh, swipe it under the rug. And it's like, ah, man, we've had blown coverages before in games and we've been able to get away with it. This week versus Joe Flacco, he took advantage of every blown coverage that we had. 